welcome back to the channel. And for those of you who are new, my name is Cody. So today I'm going to be working on this headache rack for my old body style power stroke. Now I actually got this headache rack at a junkyard of all places for 25 bucks. It came out of, I think at 89 F-150. It was some sort of brick nose forward, but it doesn't matter because the, the feet for that headache rack are the exact same dimensions as this box. So it fits in perfectly. There's a couple things I don't like about it. Like it's one inch too short of the cab height of the, the roof of the cab so I can't really put anything on top of the headache rack other, without hitting the, the cab of the truck it's like right below the third brake light and I'll show you what I'm talking about later so that's something I don't like another thing was I had expanded metal along the whole way so I just cut that center section out and I'm gonna be putting in some posts on either side so I can use the split window still on the truck so just minor things that I thought would be a really fun welding project to show on the channel all I've done so far just to dial in my welder is fill in these little posts right here this tiny section here someone to drill the hole here so i filled in those two holes and then put another end cap on this side as well so that's all i've done so far everything is already pre-cut and cut to size i just got to weld it all in so i got two dog ears i'm i'm gonna be putting some anchor d shackles on either one i think that'll be kind of nifty be helpful in the future I cut these a little too short, so I'm going to be putting some plates on the end on both of them. And then I made some gussets. It's a pretty nice headache rack for 25 bucks, two inch square tubing. And it needs some help with the welds like here and here. But this Harbor Freight welder has been doing fantastic. I've been able to sink a lot of heat into this quarter inch angle iron. So even though this isn't the cleanest uh, spot to weld, I'm just going to throw in a quick bead just because it's pretty spotty as you can see and there's a little bit of rust in there it shouldn't be that big of a deal so this is 030 wire and i'm going to be using the max setting with like a four to five wire speed Moving on to the other foot of the headache rack, I actually duct taped a welding lens to the GoPro screen. That's how I'm able to get this shot here. So basically what I'm doing is going a lot slower than the other side. I only wanted to do one pass, and what you're seeing me is dragging the gun along from right to left, kind of in a backwards cursive E motion, just up and down, up and down. And even though there was a little bit of porosity in this weld, it turned out pretty good. You can hear in the background noise, there's a little bit of a, like a sizzling bacon sound. And that told me that I had my welder dialed in pretty spot on. I thought it was worth mentioning here that the only reason I'm putting end caps on both sides of the square tubing is because I'd originally cut them too short, about by half an inch. So after putting on those little tiny pieces of flat bar steel on both ends and grinding a little bit, they fit inside the headache rack frame perfectly and there was no complaints going forward. Also I want to give Tom Gun Tools and HodgePodge Dodge Garage a big shout out for sending me channel stickers across the country. I end up putting them on my welding helmet and they look really cool so thanks guys. Okay so now the hard part is getting these perfectly squared up in the right distance apart. Usually I take the measure once cut twice approach. I kind of just wing it. But this is something that I actually want to get right. square. Okay, I'm going to tack that in. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, so those posts are in. I took like a 15 minute lunch break, let the welder cool down, let this metal cool down. I'm really happy with how it turned out, guys. It's straight, they're both even on both sides, the bars aren't twisted. I'm really pleased. So, next, I thought about doing the dog ears, but I'm gonna do the gussets next instead. So what I'm thinking of is something kind of like that. Now, I wish when the guy had made this, whoever made this, had gotten three inch channel iron, that way it would come out to here, and I could run a gusset kind of at an angle like that, but that's not the case here. I could lop these off and put three inches of uh, angle iron there, but I'm not gonna do that. They're already spread apart perfectly, so I'm just gonna go right here. And what's good about this is I made the gusset, it'll sit kind of right there on that Sharpie line, kind of like that. And the toolbox will actually butt up right to there. So that's why it's a kind of a short gusset. I'm sure these welds would hold up fine, but putting things like heavy things on here, plywood, standing on it, whatever, I just want this a little bit more structural. And so far that's what I've come up with. Finally done with these gussets, it's not going to win any awards. You can see a lot of spatter. So in theory, if my measurements were right, the toolbox should sit right up against that ledge there and that'll be the perfect distance. So when you open up the door, it'll just barely touch this bar. Everything's going according to plan. It looks pretty good. Now I just got to finish up these dog ears on either side. So these are tacked in. I didn't show that on camera because that would have been way too difficult. Needed like three hands to do the job anyways. So I got them as flat as I possibly could. You can see a little bit of gap there. This was the hardest part of the whole project, trying to cut this with a cutoff wheel from the grinder. It was just a nightmare. So it wasn't the right tool for the job, but I got the job done. One thing I have to be careful of is that these caps are eighth inch thick, but the square tube in itself is only uh, 16th. So I really gotta watch uh, what I'm doing with the MIG gun. I don't wanna sink a lot of heat into these if I can help it. So here's something kind of stupid for you. I ran out of flux core wire just a couple inches from being finished with this project. I went all over town. I went to Harbor Freight. I went to Home Depot trying to find 030 wire. They didn't have any. I never used this wire that came with the, the welder because I thought it was 035. If I had just opened up the box, I would have found an entirely new spool unopened of 030 wire. Could have saved myself an hour. Well. <laughs> Learn by doing, I guess. I almost forgot to put on these uh, D-ring anchors. I was just about to get ready for grinding that I saw these on the table. I had to break the welder back out. All right, so this is all dry, ready to go. I did two coats on both sides. And 
since the feet are quarter inch material, when I put this toolbox back on, it's gonna kinda sit uneven. So in, in order to level that out, I got some two inch flat bar that's quarter inch and I just made myself a couple thick washers. I could have went to the hardware store and stacked up some washers, but I wanted it to look a little bit more professional than just stacking metal. So uh, that's how I'm gonna mount it. I have seven sixteenths bolts. I believe they're two inches long uh, that'll go down there. And then I also have some rubber, where I put those? Yeah. Also got some rubber strips I'm gonna put on there so I'll keep vibrations at a minimum and not make anything noisy. So after about two or three months of staring at this thing in my garage, <laughs> finally got it mounted in the truck. And guys, I'm really happy with how it turned out. The black flat paint, paint really turned out well, just rattle canning it, in two coats. And these D-rings I think will hold up well over time. Even got the toolbox in place. And this stands out like a sore thumb, but at least there's not a big gaping hole in there, right? So. Got all my gear in place. Even found this little organizer tray for a buck. Slides back and forth. It's a really, really nice setup and adds a lot of versatility to the truck. But this is why I wanted to cut out this expanded metal. So I still have the option to open up my split window if I needed to climb out there for whatever reason or get something in the cab real quick from, from the bed. The dog ears are above the cab but the rack itself is not. You see like the it's covering up half of the brake light. And in order to change that, I would have had to move the entire thing up above the cab. I would have had to get probably $100 worth of uh, square tubing. So that's what you see. Here's a side view of those gussets. And the reason I made them this big is so when you hit the button, the lid just barely has enough space in between the headache rack. Guys, thanks so much for watching the video. It really does mean a lot you stuck to the end here. Let me know what you think in the comments below of how my welds were. I'm not a professional by any means, but I could not be happier with how that $100 Harbor Freight welder does. I've done everything from like really, really thin sheet metal on body work all the way up to quarter inch material and it's being able to handle it all. So really, really pleased. So next week's video is gonna be working on this truck here with uh, why the check engine light comes on to roughly 35 to 45 mile an hour. So what basically happens without going in too deep, uh, cause I'll explain it obviously in the next video, it lightly bucks and then you feel like you just lose power, especially going up hills, you could floor it and you only hit like 25 mile an hour. So to me, that sounds like fuel pressure but I'm gonna start with a, a really cheap sensor first. I've got a new ICP sensor coming in the mail, but I also bought a diagnostic tool that I can plug right into my computer. and It'll give me a live feed of what the truck's doing. So uh, that'll really tell a lot. I'm also gonna do a buzz test on the injectors just to be safe. I don't think it's injectors, but while I have it out, I'll just test it. So guys, thanks so much for watching. Stay tuned for the next video and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.